This is your front yard. Yeah, this is this is my life. Do you play basketball when it's like this out? No, not usually, but I mean right now it's not even that bad. Yeah. It's not right on the basketball hoop like it usually is. Like right now. And what what happens when it is? I mean I mean I get a wicked bad headache so I have to go inside. You get you can't play. knew exactly what was going on with our daily lives and, and invading our property, invading our home, we can't enjoy our own property, that they would side with us. You know, I, I think there's a misconception out there in the public that, you know, maybe we're not being affected the way we're saying we're being affected. And it is hard to believe, I'll admit it. I don't think the siting uh, was appropriate and um, I hope they shut the turbine off. That's the only thing I'll be satisfied with because I don't think it was correctly placed or the bylaws were followed. Um, there's a lot of things that have come out about the siting and the placement of the turbine that it just doesn't make sense to put this in the middle of a residential neighborhood. It should be somewhere it's not going to disturb people. Just one other question. Um, I'm sure you've heard this term, and maybe it's been pointed at you, the, the, the term NIMBY, not in my backyard. How would you respond to that? If someone said, you're just being NIMBY, not in my backyard, that the, the turbine has to be somewhere. How would you respond to that? Well, it's affecting us negatively, um, both our health, uh, our way of life, our, our normal daily activities. Um, my wife was trying to make a cake on Saturday and she couldn't finish it because of the flicker. You know, I was I was cooking, um, you know, spaghetti sauce. I mean, you know, you can't concentrate, you can't read a book, you can't read the paper, you can't relax. I couldn't go up in my backyard right now and just do normal, everyday activities. Um, if they had it in their backyard, I think, I don't think they'd be happy. And not only that, I think they would be looking for support, as we are, from other residents in town who, who really don't realize what's going on. Uh, the bathroom? I said, are you home? Because this thing, I mean, I was sitting here and I could, Middle. I can feel it. I was awake till four or two. He puts these headphones in and listens to his band or whatever all night. And I never let him before. Well, with the blind shut, this is um, this is my son's room. And uh, this is my son's room here. Kind of messy. <laughs> um, we'll start over. Uh, this is my son's room, and um, my son is is 14 years old. Um, my son was diagnosed with epilepsy uh, many years ago. So is that your rule that he uh, can't stay in his room? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much the rule. We don't want him in his room. You know, we're not always home, um, mm -hmm. so we can't control it. Yeah. You know, that's the scary part is I was at a meeting Wednesday when we had a flicker for uh, an hour and over an hour, hour and 10 minutes or so. It's written on the calendar. I couldn't tell you offhand, but I wasn't here. I think you said here. 70 minutes. I wasn't here. Um, and my next door neighbor actually came over and, you know, asked him to leave the room. So the scariest part is that when we're not here, yet if nobody's here and he ever had a seizure, God forbid, what would happen? We, we, you don't even know. You don't know.